hello to all of you. Let's start with a brief reflection on us as a team and why we're doing this webinar. Um, Evia and I are coming from quite different backgrounds. Evia is a seasoned program manager and my professional home is service management for many years. So you would actually expect us to work only during handover together on any given project. But we are using a different approach here. Our project team and our run team are working hand in hand right from the start. Meaning Evie and I are sharing our leadership role on a day-to-day -day business and not only acting as a double act in this webinar. So during the next 30 minutes or so, we would like to give you a few insights on what we do. And uh, yeah, let me start off with the fact that Elvia and I define success in the same way. So Elvia, what do you think makes a program manager successful in IT? Foremost, I would say the team she or he is surrounded by. And of course, good organizational as well as communication skills, empathy and resilience. Thinking about IT specifically and what is especially important, I'd like to quote the Cambridge Dictionary, <clears throat> according to which information technology is the science and activity of using computers and other electronic equipment to store and send information. Although this definition is drastically simplified, it does point out a few aspects which a program manager in Eurofins has to understand. Firstly, you're working with very smart people who are working and thinking very straightforward. A program manager needs to understand that straightforward plans, concepts, and communications are preferred. And when you are lucky, even appreciated. Secondly, IT is the most rapidly changing industry you can think of. Whatever was state of the art today might be irrelevant tomorrow. Therefore, a very high tolerance for frustration and the ability to constantly review and change your plans is paramount to success for a program manager. So tell me, Anke, uh, what makes in your eyes a successful people manager? Well, you said it, a successful team, of course. A successful man manager in, in my eyes is just very good at creating successful teams. I believe it's the ability to understand what motivates and what frustrates each member of the team and being able to act on that knowledge. That is what a manager needs to create a successful team. And obviously supporting the team without getting in their way too much. Maybe adjusting priorities and focus here and there when it's needed. But the real key to building a successful team is diversity within the team. Think about our team, for example. We have members living on almost every continent. We have different ages, gender, cultural backgrounds, career paths. You name it. Diversity enriches the team. It brings a multitude of opinions and experiences, and it actually drove us to the motto you see on the slide. The whole is more than the sum of its parts. We will talk about diversity later, but um, first, let's talk a little bit about what we have planned for the audience, for you. We will try to give you some real insights into our journey to redefine ITSM for Eurofins and how this supports our current transformation towards a decentralized IT. And this is what we have in store for you today. How to do a 180 degree turn to become an internal MSP how to stay positive if you cannot rebuild your IT world in seven days, how to stay on course while handling in-flight changes, how to fail fast, learn quickly, and build resilience, how a diverse team can make all the difference, how to communicate, communicate, and communicate, how to keep your chin up and carry on, and how a chainsaw can lift the team spirit. The last point will certainly raise a few eyebrows, However, let us now start with something that is a little bit less enticing. So it's time to talk about IT service management then. 
If you think about ITSM, it's likely that you think about ticketing, processes, performance measures, KPIs, SLA reports. I'm not sharing a secret when I say all this is necessary and important to deliver solid IT services. However, the actual value of a good ITSM practice and the overall objective is the continued improvement of the customer experience. Delivering service excellent or a great customer service is mentioned in the mission statement of every IT department I know. Although in reality, the focus often shifts to operational needs instead of the customer. So how do we ensure that the customer, also known as the business, is actually the center of attention of our IT department? Eurofins found an equally radical yet efficient way to achieve this. Our solution is to decentralize the IT organization and create a number of smaller IT groups dedicated to support a specific part of our business and hereby creating a close relationship between the internal customer and the internal service provider. Clear customer focus is inevitable in this setup. But so are also a few challenges, like maintaining governance and a few standards at least. So here is where a common ITSM platform really is essential. We were looking for a tool that would allow us to treat the different IT groups as independent service providers, but still maintain a common set of processes and controls. We found a tool that provides excellent out-of-the-box functionality with just the right level of automation we needed to support our transformation and not complicate it even more. But the tool is just half of the solution. You also need a good team to make it work. Alongside the tool, we have built a service management office to run and evolve the platform. More importantly, the SMO will partner with each of the IT groups to ensure their requirements find their way into our future platform development roadmap. Managing the process communities to balance local and global needs is a key objective of the SMO. Our form of crowdsourcing, if you want. This will help to maintain a common set of processes and workflows, despite all the decentralization. Sounds good, doesn't it? You've guessed it, it's not that easy. Let me hand over to Elvia so that she can give you insights in our development program. Thanks, Anka. Good, so let's implement a tool that will be a quick win. Something no program nor project manager would ever say. It appears to be simple and straightforward, especially since we will be implementing out of the box, as Anka just explained. But let me remind you what we just learned about the environment we are working in. We are facing a change of IT strategy from centralization to decentralization. We have around 50,000 end users at Eurofins, including hundreds of IT fulfillers working with the platform day to day. And on top of all, very high expectations, as we are expected to revolutionize the efficiency of IT service at Eurofins. Many would say this is beyond ambitious. But you got to know us a little bit by now. We are committed to get it done. And since we have the best team in place to do so, we are confident that our platform implementation will be successful. And if not, we might be back for a future where we now with our lessons learned then. Key to success for a program within a changing environment is to structure the program very strictly. Let me explain the steps we took. First, we built a team of experts and created work streams to make sure that we can work in parallel on the most important topics. Each one of our work stream leaders is a subject matter expert um, for a certain topic with a background in IT service management. Secondly, we structured the implementation in releases to produce tangible results early on in the project already. Third, we took the time to create IT service management processes upfront to build a good foundation of the platform and involve different colleagues in the process creation by setting up editorial committees. Fourth, 
We set up a very ambitious communication plan, making sure that the program and the change we're pushing is as transparent as possible to our colleagues who are our internal customers. And last but not least, the team collected a wish list with over 1,600 requirements from our colleagues and compared it to the out-of-the-box functionalities. During that process, we learned a lot about the needs as well as the expectations of our IT colleagues. And I can tell you they are high. No pressure was therefore never really a working mantra within this program. And before you now think that was it, let us add a bit more pressure to it. It has always been clear that we will have to onboard an external partner to implement the tool as we did not have the required knowledge in-house. Easy to understand that this was one of the key milestones for us. But how to find the best partner? We started with another partner to create our architecture for the selective platform and turned it into an RFQ to finally select our implementation partner. Wait, I said selective platform? This, of course, did not appear out of thin air either. It was selected after another RFP we started right in the beginning of the program. Let's now get back to the search for the implementation partner that we selected the platform now. Validating quotes of potential implementation partners is, of course, difficult when you're talking about a moving target and asking external partners for flexibility is not exactly what they are eager to offer. But in the end, we found a partner and reached one more milestone on our way towards having the best platform we can roll out globally in the future. During the entire process of selecting a platform as well as an implementation partner, we of course never stop working. Because keep in mind, we were producing the process documentation, we were collecting the requirements, we were following our communication plan and reporting into management. Now that the program is growing bigger and an external partner adding complexity, we changed the program um, in terms of structure from streams to separate projects with separate project managers. They will involve the subject matter experts from our team as needed to make sure that we are using our team as efficient as possible. On program level, I'll take care to especially manage the external partner and our internal stakeholders. You remember those having the 1,600 requirements. Now, after a year of preparation, we are finally entering the captivating world of developers, workflow designers, and implementers to create the platform and prove that our entire work with the stakeholders, our communication initiative, the process documents, the selection of the platform, as well as the selection of the partner will produce the best ITSM platform for Eurofins. Thinking about the past month, we had to keep lots of plates spinning. Anke, do you want to share some of your fond memories here? Sure, can you hold my plates for a moment? I will. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when we started to look at the new ITSM solution for Europe and some details of our new organization were still a bit blurry. So how many IT groups will we have in the end? Which units will they support? What are the standard technologies we're going to use and so on? So all the answers to those questions evolved over time, meaning we had to frequently change our assumptions we had to reevaluate our ideas and we had to rework our solution multiple times. In short, flexibility was absolutely key. So if you ask me what my main takeaway from this time is, I would say be prepared to challenge everything you do. Expect to start over at any point in time and do not take it personal because it's not about you. One step forward and two steps back really was a common occurrence. But this project is such a unique opportunity. When do you ever get the chance to create a purpose-built ITSM platform to go live in a new organization? So in this opportunity, we clearly have the luxury to incorporate all the learnings from our past experience, but there's no need to take the baggage that we've built up in the past. Don't get me wrong, it's still a tough ask, but the team really embraced the challenge. The key skills of the people we have gathered are 
a solid understanding of the Eurofins DNA, and that is pretty unique, let me tell you. Um, excellent ITIL process knowledge, clearly. Solid solution design and good architecture know-how. What we didn't have was expert knowledge on the tool we selected, clearly. So we decided to boost the internal team by adding some contract resources while we develop the existing team and hire additional skilled personnel. The goal was to have enough know-how to be able and at times challenged our supplier while giving the existing team the chance to build their experience and make sure that none of our existing talents are left behind. So here's another takeaway for you. Build the right experience early on in the project. Easier said than done, I know, but building a successful team is actually not the last challenge we're facing. Elvia, do you want to share some insights on the in-flight changes we are presented with? You mean this big one? The implementation of an ITSM platform? Joke aside. Implementing a new platform as part of, a, of an IT transformation program presents ample opportunity for in-flight changes, not just when you are building the platform, but way before. We took a very important decision some months back regarding the high-level design of the platform, as well as the program approach in general. We decided that certain things cannot be decided. Don't force decisions, embrace the uncertainty. A lot of plans and documentation will be work in progress until the platform goes live, and we accepted that. Of course, it is not that easy, as certain parameters need to be fixed before the start of the build, but flexibility is key to success, as Anka just pointed out. Flexibility in technology, and especially flexibility in our mindset. I, I couldn't agree more. Remaining flexible in our approach and our outlook is absolutely vital. It helps to build resilience, personally, and resilience within the team. Did you know the American Psychological Association suggests to improve your resilience by doing the following? A, join a group. B, be proactive. C, move towards your goal. D, Accept the change and last but not least, my all-time favorite, maintain a hopeful outlook. That sounds very much like us. Our resilience really helps us to make steady progress. Sometimes we have to take some step back, steps back, but we continue on our journey. Evia, why don't you tell us a bit more about this journey we're on? I would love to. The journey Anke is mentioning organizational change we're supporting with our program as well. The IT transformation is present for all European's IT employees, and it takes courage to take the step and get ready for this change. Implementing a new ITSM platform for all 50,000 employees is certainly a big change, and our goal and ambition is to motivate as many colleagues as possible to join us on our journey towards the future of IT service management. We are focusing on transparent and manifold communication for each and every stakeholder, from general newsletters to individual update calls and consultation hours for management to an internal web page for all our employees. Sharing information about IT service management and the upcoming change with the platform, in our opinion, is key. Although it takes the program manager as well as the team significant time to prepare those individual communications, we believe that the better informed the stakeholders are, the better prepared they are to make decisions, which will save a lot of time during crucial project paces. Again, resilience is important. There might be update calls, the entire team prepared for two weeks, but only one of 30 participants joins. The magic happens when the team presents as if 100 people attended, and we decide on strategies how to improve the attendance, but not one second think about giving up on communication. So again, it all goes back to an amazing team of smart people and the immense joy of being part of it. We mentioned at, it at the beginning, we're convinced that the diversity of our team with every single individual is key to the resilience of the team as a whole. So many different backgrounds and opinions lead to discussions and debates, 
that let us grow every day, learning from each other and learning as a whole. Eurofins as a global company with 50,000 employees and uh, present in 50 countries is a great place to experience how diversity can drive success as well as change. And last but not least, we are a very hard working team, taking care of each other. Working long hours will not stay undetected and can I somehow help you is the first thing you will hear from your teammates. We take care of each other. When someone's workload is too high, the workload is being distributed whenever possible throughout the team. And all of that contribution, of course, has to be cherished and celebrated. Talking about celebration, I'm trying to make sure that the team has a chance to connect off work as well. The pandemic is clearly not helping, but one can celebrate success even in online meetings. The world of video calls offers many possibilities and lovely goats in calls as well as YouTube videos can make a great background for proper celebration. And of course, not to forget about Christmas parties with Christmas jumpers, cookies and Christmas pop quiz. I will now leave it to Anke to explain how a chainsaw is connected to our team spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. So I, I hope we were able to illustrate a little bit how vital a good team, a diverse team is for the overall success of your program and how important it is to keep that specific team in a good spirit. So let me share that story with you. Um, it goes back to the online Christmas party Evia organized for us last year. Um, as part of that party, Evia asked us to share the number one wish on our Amazon wish list. There were many things, pizza oven, multiple electronical devices and other desirables, you name it, it probably was on there. When it was uh, my turn, I truthfully shared the wish that was at the top of my list. You might have guessed what it was. As I am a keen gardener, owning some rather large trees, my number one wish on the list was a chainsaw to trim the branches of my trees. I am sure you can see how this wish ignited the imagination of my fellow team members sprouting many pruning suggestions. So in future, I will certainly think twice about sharing my wishes as there now have been a number of debates ending with a team member mentioning that chainsaw and thereby scaring the living daylight out of some folks. So here's my last takeaway for you. Always be mindful what you wish for. We might want to leave it to, up to Jerome now to ask for questions from the audience now that they are aware of the chainsaw in your garden shed, Anke. Yes, thank you both. And now that I have my coffee and I'm awake here, we could get into it. Now's when the fun start, ladies. So, you know, we get to put some questions to you. So the first question is in, and here we go. You've mentioned the importance for program managers not to get in the way of their teams too much. I was wondering whether you could comment on what is too much. I think anything yet that you would imagine with mentioning the word micromanaging. So if you pick the right team, have the trust in their expertise because you picked them for exactly that expertise. So let them do their job. Make sure you give the team the, the necessary guidance, but mm -hmm. only with wide guardrails, not really go into the nitty gritty. Allow the team to come to you if there's an issue, but stay out of their way and rather set up frequent and regular exchange about the objectives and the progress instead of continuously asking them to provide you with nitty gritty details that you will never fully understand because you as the manager are not the expert. Uh, um, Elvia, do you want to comment on that or did Anka sum it up for you? I think Anka summed it up pretty well. Okay, I want to dive into that a little here before we go to the next um, question. So ladies, you're in the hot seat. So either one of you can comment on this. So you said to you hired a team for their expertise, let them do the job, not to micromanage. 
But unfortunately, the reality of um, certain situations is that you do have to micromanage some people. So at what point do you then step in and have to micromanage people? I mean, what are your, your alarms that you have put in place for yourself to realize those that are not truly up to the task and will have to require more guidance. So, I'll, uh, Alvia, you want to yep, comment on sure. that? Um, so I think the, the moment when the outcome is not as expected, when we cannot solve a problem uh, together as a team anymore, when I feel as a program manager that um, things are not answered, questions are not answered, that our customer might not be happy anymore, um, this is the point for me where I dig into, not, I wouldn't even say into the details, where I just try to understand the situation of why we cannot get to come to a conclusion. Why can we not get to the outcome we, we were expecting? So I would not even call it micromanagement then, because mm -hmm. I, as Anka pointed out, we are not the experts for certain topics. I'm not an IT architect, mm -hmm. I'm a program manager. So I will find a way to make sure that the team of the architects, um, of the smart people I was talking about earlier, that they will have the chance to work um, towards the outcome. So I will try to find out if the question has not been understood, if um, the skills are missing in the team, perhaps, if we need more knowledge in the team, if other things are missing, which would be needed in order to answer that question or to solve that problem. Yeah. All right. So, Anka, do you want to add to that as well? No, I think that that was pretty pretty much what I think about it as well. Evie and I are very much aligned, as you may have have noticed by now. I see, I see. You guys are like twins here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question. And we encourage uh, people to definitely put some questions in the comment box uh, so we could get to you. So everyone, if you could um, if you could put some your comments in there, we will get to your questions. So the next question, how to make sure that everyone on the team has a chance to speak? I think that's the challenge in diverse teams, really. You are presented not only with multiple personalities as you have in every team, but you those personalities have a different cultural background, a different upbringing, and therefore you really need to adjust your approach. I think what we found is the, the different channels of communication that we're using, the different meetings that Elvia and her team are really conducting with every subgroup of the team is helpful because some people are not very comfortable talking in front of the entire team. But as um, we are having stream leads and now project leads and gathering their feedback in, in smaller groups, in different calls and through different channels. We've got teams going, we have got a DMS page, we have a page where you can contribute in writing, you can mm -hmm. even comment on our processes on our on our web page. So there are multiple channels into us as a team, not only from the outside, but also from within the team. And I think the 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 more opportunities you give people to select their preferred method of communication, mm -hmm. the, the, the higher the chances that you will get input from every team member. All right. I do want to um, actually step to a subject for a minute, and I think this ties into um, teams selected method of communication and what has been effective because unless you've been living under a rock for the last uh, 12 months or so, we have a global pandemic going on. So, uh, <laughs> and you know, I hate to do this as a cheap plug for Eurofins, but we have actually been helping a lot of major governments and companies test for COVID worldwide. So it feels great to be part of a wonderful company that's making a difference in the world. So back to my question. Um, here. So with the pan, 
pandemic, we've had to switch how we communicate because we're not meeting face to face anymore. So I would say probably um, 75, 80 percent of meetings are virtual now. Have you seen a change in how teams are working together and making progress because of this virtual work environment that we're in where the main form of communication is a webinar or video conferencing? So perhaps I can uh, jump in here. Um, I believe at Eurofins, this change was not even too big because we're such an international company with people all over the globe working together in diverse teams, as we pointed out, that we even had those video conferences and calls before because we were not able to have the weekly team meeting um, offline in a room together when our colleagues are sitting all over the, over the world. So we were pretty used to that even before. Of course, you're right, the, the pandemic um, does put a different emphasis on using online communication channels. Um, and what I think what, what makes the difference there is people are more and more on calls, so you're, you're not so much connecting offline anymore at all. So no coffee break, no, no, no breaks at all because calls are scheduled back to back all the time for all the team members. So it got even more important to have those fun sessions, I would call them, to connect off work as well making sure that you have virtual coffee breaks, that you have after work parties, a Christmas party and so on, that you really use this opportunity as well of all those um, online online channels and online communication methodologies to make sure that the team can connect offline because you have less and less offline connection, less and less private um, conversation, which is crucial for a team to grow as well. It's not only about work, it's about the team and the people within the team. So it's very important to, to keep up those type of conversations as well. Okay. And you know, I had to switch to that model with my team because my team actually they're global as well. So um, trying to find ways to better connect with them, I do actually agree with that. But have you seen a drop in the productivity of the and I'll pass this question to you, Anka. Have you seen a drop in the productivity of the teams um, now that we're in a prim primarily virtual work environment. Have you seen a drop in the teams? Not, not at all. Quite the contrary, actually, hmm. because you know it's you, you have to make sure to mindfully schedule social time between team members because of the pandemic hmm. to avoid that people really become you know, so bogged down on their task that mm -hmm. they they miss out on the social experience in being part of a team. So I think it is that's the to me the the real challenge that um, this this isolation we're forced into can drive people to really focus so much on on the task at hand that all the the necessary and the the enriching influences coming from the outside but you know somebody passing by your desk and looking at what you're doing or just asking you what you're doing mm -hmm. and you start a communication and you gather input from somebody you probably would have not talked about it but because you happened to pass by there, there are possibilities that you get um, a different viewpoint that you never thought about asking for. That is something that you don't have in, mm -hmm. in this time of, of video conferencing and the pandemic. So we need to be very mindful to really give within our video calls enough time for this social and not necessarily targeted communication, which might bring up ideas or a different viewpoint that we have not thought about. Oh. Oh. You know, I, I know both of you ladies, I work with you and I definitely say you two are doing a wonderful job um, in our IT group here. 
And this leads me into another question that I'm going to ask, and it's, it's actually kind of personal, but I think uh, you two, as females in a male-dominated field such as IT, who've been very successful. Um, so I'll start with you, Elvia, if you don't mind. Um, what has been the secret to your success as a female in IT? What do you, or what do you think it is? Well, I hope and I think that it is the same for everyone. We're all doing a good job, regardless of gender, of cultural background, of whatever. Um, it's about the job you do. It's about the dedication you have. It's um, about um, improving on a daily basis, about learning. Um, and I think it's regardless if you're a male or female, do a good job and you will be successful. All right. Anka? I think as I have uh, a few more years in IT compared to Elvia, I have um, obviously experienced a slightly different time as as a woman in IT because when I started it really I really was the odd one out um, but I absolutely have to second what Avia said as long as you do a good job you will be successful if you make sure that it is clearly noted that you're doing a good job something that is not easy for women we don't really have the tendency to bang our own drum. That is something that I think we can learn. And uh, if need be, we can copy from our male colleagues. And I think the other element that I would, would add to this is be, be brave. Just grab opportunities that are presenting themselves. Don't second guess yourself too much which is also a rather female trait. Um, but other than that, Avia is absolutely right. There is no difference and there shouldn't be really. So being, being recognized by what you can do is much more important than being recognized the gender you're with. Okay, all right. All right, so we're going to jump into some questions um, from the audience here. So this one is for Anka. You're, yeah. you're an experienced manager. What has been your biggest challenge in terms of people management? Oh, wow. <laughs> what was my biggest challenge in people management? I think making, making hard decisions is making decisions that you personally feel bad about but on a professional yeah. level you know they're the right ones so maintaining that balance between your human side and the professional mainly the economical needs that is that to me is has always been and I guess will always be the biggest challenge because I I like to be a manager I love working with people I love developing people and for me the the biggest failure for me as a manager is when I have to let go of people and that is always a tremendous challenge all right okay thank you for that anchor so, Elvia, I'm going to pass this next question to you. What would be the greatest challenge of having a diverse team? Um, thinking about cultural backgrounds, you, of course, have cultural differences there as well. Um, thinking about giving feedback, for example, it might be pretty different in, in when you have a, a different cultural background. So you have to be very mindful of, of how people were, were raised, were educated and um, where they come from. So you have to be very mindful in a diverse team that everybody is able to express themselves, to speak up. You might have differences in um, the, the ability to talk, to talk in front of groups. I think Anka mentioned that earlier. 
uh, already. So you have to. It's just about mindfulness, I think, in the end, making sure that everybody has a place in that team and is appreciated as a team member, as an individual, as a part of a group. OK, all right. Thank you very much. Um, so this is a quite this next question I kind of pose to you and yeah. it's more on the technical side. How do you overcome the challenge of so diverse requirements and keep ITMS ITSM platforms manageable? That is indeed a, a real challenge. And uh, especially when you look at the the a decentralized IT with different requirements depending on the, the specific IT groups and the, the services they or the, the business they support. Um, what we decided we would do is we would really go down the crowdsourcing route. We would try to encourage different representatives from the IT groups to come together and as a team develop the specific process they are representing together with us on the platform. So they are trying to really avoid the not invented by us issue because that is always a problem when you have a, a global platform um, but local local users and local customers on the platform not every not every group will adopt the process that has been imposed on them so we're trying to imposing a specific way of working and really encourage the the representatives of the different teams to work with us to develop new processes process improvements evolve the platform together with us for the greater good, if you want. All right. So, speaking of the greater good, Elvia, I'm going to ask this next question to you. How do you measure a good job, and how do you measure success, and what about individual performance? That's an interesting question. So, I mean, of course, you can measure performance by using KPIs and and strict performance measures. Um, I think in the end, the outcome counts. Right. We need to reach a goal. We need to implement an ITSM platform. We need to be successful with that. We need to be successful for the sake of delivering something to our customers. So the individual performance, I think, is measured by the outcome of what the team can achieve in the end. Mm -hmm. So not only the, the individual performance of, of one person of the team, but I think the, the contribution of this individual to the team as well counts. Right, so it's it's getting more and more difficult, especially in IT. Things can only be achieved when you're working together as a group. Um, individual performance can only be as good as the performance of the group. So I think it's it's hard to measure it with the with the old KPIs. I would call them what was like what we did in the past. I think we need mm -hmm. to find more flexible ways, but it should be outcome driven, in my opinion. All right. So, Alvi, I'm going to continue with you um, there for a minute because. Um, the second part to that question and the new question that came and actually sort of merged together. So I'm going to um, tie these two questions together. Is this not becoming more challenging with the need to be flexible in an ever changing environment, especially when requirements from stakeholders are not clear and forever changing? I think we should not. In general, I would um, be careful of mixing up flexibility and um, being outcome driven because flexibility does not mean that we are not achieving anything right it just means that the way we are moving on is flexible that we might take a step back to to take two steps up front again um, so we need to be careful when when measuring the the performance of someone um, we cannot um, it's not negative when you have to take two steps back again to then progress and this, I think, is, is really important to understand, especially with this flexibility and, and all the challenges we are we are facing. Um, asking about the requirements and the challenge with all those uh, d different require requirements, mapping this to to the flexibility and to the individual performance is, of course, difficult. But again, I think this is key as well. Communication. Mm -hmm. We need to talk to each other. We need to talk to the people when there is a requirement which is challenging, which is perhaps difficult to achieve. 
let's first ask about the requirement. Let's talk to the customer of what do they really want to achieve with that. So the individual person of our team can then investigate, can think through, can discuss with the team. And coming back to the to the performance and the measurement of the performance of an individual, I think it's a lot about about empathy and communication there as well, right? To to better understand what the needs are, to be with this flexible approach of, of um, getting to a solution or conclusion, uh, how flexible someone can be in coming to an outcome. So this leads us actually towards the end of our presentation. But before we do go to our end of our presentation, someone had a question that I do want to acknowledge um, here, and I think both you and I could answer that. Uh, you said Eurofins is present in more than 50 countries. What about IT at Eurofins? So this is a, like a little bit of difficult question for, for me to answer. I would say we're present everywhere. Like, um, I mean, IT is the backbone of everything, right? Yeah. We need to keep that in mind. Wherever we're having a business, we need IT in the background. Nothing will, will be working without the servers in the background and without the solutions and the team in the background. Um, I can tell for sure, so I think this would be something we might need to to um, check afterwards again. Uh, I would assume that we are present in all those countries where we are having a business, um, because in every business and every lab we need someone from IT making sure that uh, it's going to work. Um, so I think we can be pretty sure of having uh, our IT colleagues um, all over the world and with a presence in all of those countries mentioned. All right, so I'll actually um, comment on that as well. And yes, um, in nearly all the 50 countries, we do have IT needs because as Elvia did allude to, is that IT is the backbone of all business. And here at Eurofins, it is our lifeblood there. We not only own laboratories that we do tests in, but to keep those laboratories and to keep those testing going, we need that IT infrastructure there. So. In mostly all 50 countries, yes, we do have IT opportunities, maybe not at the corporate level, but at the local level. So to find out more about those IT opportunities that we do have here at Eurofins, um, as I stated earlier, please follow us on social media. And also we have two wonderful opportunities that I'd like to present to you where we're looking for a ServiceNow lead in Brussels, and the opportunity will relocate qualified candidates if they are selected um, to Brussels. And we also have a senior infrastructure lead in Bangalore. So everyone, I do want you to also check out, we do have a third one there, the blue sorts of, <laughs> skews it a little, but we have a senior engineer, Kubernetes, that we're looking for in Hamburg, Germany as well. You can find these opportunities on our website. So do go and look at these opportunities and apply as well. And as you can see, our social media section, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, on, and on LinkedIn. And we post out some great stuff there on a weekly basis about Eurofins, what's going on, so you can follow us. So any last words you would like to leave us with, Alvia? I would just like to thank you for the opportunity for, for this webinar. I would like to thank the audience for, for listening in. Um, and you heard there is an open position in our team. Um, so please feel free to, to apply. We would be happy in, in growing the team and welcoming you to, to the team of our Eurofence colleagues. So thank you very much for, for tuning in today. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for the second in our series of um, I, our IT at Eurofins talks here, and I do recommend that you follow us so you can get the updates for our next uh, series that we do present.